Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X minus one... Tonight, the Murray Leinster story, If You Was a Mocklin. Up to the last minute, I can't imagine that Mocklin is going to be the first planet that humans get off of. Moving fast, breathing hard, and sweating copious. There isn't any reason for it. Everything was all quiet at the trading post. I was sitting on the front porch while Dee... He's the Mocklin clerk. Looks a lot like a guy named Casey used to be a wiper on the Palmyra. He comes out on the porch. Brinkley? Morning, Dave. How's business? Eh, not so good. There were a few wood Mocklins in this morning. Yeah, I saw. Kind of nice looking. Those big saucer eyes. Hey, what makes the noses wiggle like rabbits? Well, I don't know, sir. I'm not a woods Mocklin. Oh, sure. It's no offense. They buy much? No, they didn't. They said the prices were too high. Oh. Yeah, they said they can get the same goods at the other trading post for half price. Yeah, it's kind of hard to run a nice little monopoly for the company with another trading post opening up at half price. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Sir? Look at that little kid playing in the mud. <laughs> you mean the Marklin kid? Yeah, it's my cousin's niece. I can't get over those little kids with a droopy mustaches like old man Bland. I gotta laugh every time. Well, uh, I understand, but, but you see, Marklins are getting much more human every day. Hey, look at that. They go to trees on the landing field. Yeah, but the relief ship isn't due for a month. I never knew those trees to get up and walk away if there wasn't a ship due when. Yeah, there goes old Sally pulling up a route. Well, this can't be any routine ship. I wish Brooks was back from the hills. Hey, Captain Heine! Yeah, nice to see you all again. Friends, yeah, sure, sure. Friends, friends. <laughs> yeah. I wish those Marklins were a little less friendly each time. It's like being a movie star. <laughs> Captain? Captain Haney? Hey, what's that? We didn't send a requisition for anything like that. Red hair and everything else. Captain? Relax, Brinkley. That is Inspector Caldwell. She's a troubleshooter for Sam Company. They must have finally read those reports books keep sounding that. Look out for her. She's... Oh, well, uh, good morning, Miss Caldwell. Inspector Caldwell, please. This is Joe Brinkley. He's the assistant manager of the company post. Where's Brooks? Uh, he's up in the mountains, ma'am. We should have been here. I'm on Mocklin to check into this matter of a competitive trading post. Who's back of it? The company is supposed to have exclusive trading rights. But Brooks is trying to find out. The Mocklins around the place always say the humans are off somewhere hunting or something. We've never seen them. Hey, take the ladies' luggage. Uh, yes, sir. It's a pleasure. Oh, he looks a little familiar, your clerk. Well, he's a Mocklin. But he looks a lot like a man used to be a wiper on a Palmyra, Casey. I think he's on the Aldebaran run now. Uh, please. Please conduct me to the trading post. <laughs> That afternoon, Brooks come down out of the hills with a bunch of woods Marklins that were guiding him. I took Inspector Caldwell over to meet him, and he gets one look at her red hair and other equipment, and he stops short. Hey, what's this? She Marklin? 
I beg your pardon. Uh, this is Inspector Caldwell. She came in on a Palmyra today. This is Brooks, the head trader. Well, am I glad to see you. I guess they finally read my reports in sector headquarters. You've come to check my request that the planet be abandoned? Not at all. Marklin has great potentialities. Friendly natives, trade should continue and increase. But I explained All but... I'm interested in is why you allowed a competitive post to be established in our exclusive territory. My reports cover that. Haven't you read them? Of course not. I was given a briefing on the situation here and told to correct it. Well, now, let's get to it. Do they cut prices? Fifty percent. But lots of Marklins still trade with us, just out of friendship. They're real friendly, these Marklins. Now, I'd like to know just... Excuse me, Mr. Brinkley. What is it, Dave? Uh, a girl just brought you a compliment. Oh? Well, now, send her in and get a present for her. Yes, sir. Uh, fifty percent. Hmm. Well, if they want a trade war, we'll give it to them. We can cut prices if we have to. We have all the resources of the company behind my us. My dear Miss Caldwell, if you'd read any Inspector of my... Inspector re- Caldwell. Yes, she is, Mr. Brinkley. <laughs> Compliments, sir. Compliments. Well, let's see him. He's asleep. Well, look at that. He is like mine. The same bastion nose and everything. <laughs> what do you know? Hey, what's your name? Morano. I can't remember ever seeing you before. Well, that's the way it goes. Hey, they take her in the post and give her a present. Yeah, this way. Thanks for the compliment. I'm greatly honored. Ah, it's real cute, ain't it? Real human. Human? Brinkley, you are going to be transferred out of here the instant the Palmyra gets back. Why? You mean that girl? I'm giving her a present. What's the matter? That's all you think about it? Oh, the callousness. You're revolting. Miss Caldwell, I'm afraid maybe you don't exactly understand about parallel evolution here on Markland. I gather it's been parallel enough. That will be all on that subject, if you please. In the morning, I shall want to go and inspect that other trading post. We set out for the trading post the next day. Brooks stayed behind on the corner. He was peeved that she hadn't read his report. Anyway, she was cute as a bug, and he resented anyone with a figure like that in authority over him. Especially without reading his report. Well, I tried to explain to Miss Caldwell that we just couldn't go in and rip up the opposition post. Why not? They're poaching. Marklin's imitate humans. Now, if we start trouble, they'll start it too. Anything. Mayhem, murder, theft, bigamy. Bigamy? You're worried about that? Listen, Miss Caldwell, you've got to understand about Marklin evolution. I'm not interested. Here, here, wait a minute. Now, this is a nest bush, see? There's about a dozen nests on it. Hmm? Now, only about two of them are right. Look. Oh, there's a bird. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Now, see, the bush grows nests for the cackle bird, and the bird, well, fertilizes around the bush. It's even stable. See, that's the way evolution works on Markland, like we were trying to tell you. Mr. Brinkley, I am not interested in learning about the birds and the bees on Markland or any other planet from you. Now, let's get on to that trading post. Naturally, when we got there, there was only a couple of Marklins hanging around. They told us the same story about the humans having gone off somewhere hunting donder flies. When we got back to the company post... Inspector Caldwell, furious as a wet cackle bird, marched right into Brooks. I have just ordered a price cut on all items on sale by 75%. I've also ordered unlimited credit for Mocklin customers. They want a trade war over there? I'll give it to them. But you don't understand. There's a whole planet where they could have put another trading post without being discovered. Why put it so close to us? That furnishes them with a ready-made market for human trade goods. And it furnished them with Mocklins trained to be interpreters and clerks. And it furnished them with a Mocklin head clerk, who is a very handsome young man, Mr. Brooks. He not only resembles you in every feature, but he even has a good many of your mannerisms. You should be very proud. Goodbye. It's funny. Like me, huh? That's right. Spitting them at. Funny as folks never brought him for a compliment present. How good's the likeness? If he was wearing your clothes, I'd swear it was you. Maybe. Joe, remember that time you went off hunting with Deeth and his folks? 
Yeah, sure. We were after Donderflies. We caught about six of them. You were wearing Markland clothes, weren't you? Well, you know how they are. You're insulted if you don't. Listen, did you come back after one day for tobacco and a bath? No. No, we were way over at Tunnelib Hill. Some Markland got killed and we had to bury him. It took two days. Well, during that week, while you were off wearing Markland clothes, somebody came back here wearing your clothes. He got some tobacco and went out again. He looked just like you, Joe. Exactly. Nobody suspected it wasn't you. Why should he want to do that? He might have been checking to see if he could fool me. Oh, that's a situation, ain't it? I haven't mentioned it before, but I've been guessing it's something like this. Marklins like to be human. And they have kids that look human. Look at the difference between Deeth and a woods Marklin. Well, maybe they can want to be smart like humans. Pretty soon they are, or their kids are. That, that rival trading post. You figure there aren't any humans running it. They're practicing with that. You mean they might figure to get rid of us and have a couple of Marklins take our place? I don't believe that. Marklins like humans. They wouldn't harm humans for anything. They like to be just like them. Listen, Joe. Miss Colwell is the first human woman on Marklin, isn't she? Yeah. Why? She's got red hair. The first woman the Marklins see, and with red hair. You know how Marklins admire humans. With luck, it ought to turn up soon. (laughs) Boy, she's going to take it hard if it does. Women hate to be wrong. But it's about our only chance. Uh, Listen, Joe, we've got to have some check between us. What for? Well, if there's a Marklin that looks like me and one that looks like you, we better have a signal. Look, I'll cough twice, like this. (coughs) And you whistle back. That way, we'll know it's us. Okay. Try it. (coughs) Good, good. That way, we'll know we're us. Brooks starts off the next morning to visit the other trading post and see the Markland that looks so much like him. Before he goes, we do our little routine. It's about two weeks till the Palmyra is due back. That's pretty close figuring, waiting for what we're waiting for. I was thinking how good life was on Markland up to now. And that made me kind of a little sad. But it's the end, there's no doubt about it. Markland sure admire humans. They produce kids that look like them. You can't help liking Marklands. But I can see what Brooks means. Markland's loose among humans outsmarting them as their kids grow up, just about taking over in the galaxy. When they come back from the other trading post, we went through the secret business again. <coughs> Meantime, Inspector Caldwell was busy with her trade war. She cut prices once, twice, finally six times until three days before the Palmyra is due back. Our goods are marked at exactly 1% of what they cost a month before. Brooks was getting more and more nervous. Seemed like he was falling kind of in love with a snappy little inspector. He was getting jumpy waiting for her to get her big surprise. She was making out merchandise requisitions one morning when Deeth come in smiling friendly at her. Inspector Colwell? Oh, what is it, Deeth? There's a compliment for you. What? Three of them. What is he talking about? Joe, this is it. Deeth, show him in. Now, look, I haven't got time for public relations. These inventories... Ah, here we are. Inspector Colwell... Three compliments. <laughs> compliment, compliment, compliment. Now, let's see him. Very pretty. Very human, no? Oh, no. No, no, that, that's impossible. No. Very pretty. Red hair, all three of them. Red hair. Very pretty red hair. Same as human lady. Very pretty. <laughs> all right, Deeth. Take her out and give her some presents. This way. Come on. But, but, but that's impossible. But, but those babies, three of them, they, they all... They couldn't. They do. They look exactly like you. That's what we were trying to tell you. But I, 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 I've only been here a month. Markland babies get born real fast. They sure admire humans. It's kind of friendly when you think about it. You mean they can make their babies look like anybody they want? It was all in my reports. They've got a queer sort of evolution here on Markland. Babies here inherit desired characteristics, not acquired characteristics, desired ones. 
And what could be more desirable than you? Red hair and all. Oh, but I... But I thought... I mean, you and Brinkley... (laughs) You couldn't help it, dear. Really. But I I hated you. I I thought that... Look, darling. Um, Joe. Yeah? Do me a favor, will you? Uh, Sure, what? Get out of here. Oh. Okay. And stay away for a while. Sure. Only one thing. What? That's... (coughs) Okay. Then I'll leave you two together. About two days later, the Palmyra boomed down out of the sky. We were all packed up waiting on the field when the trees finished getting out of the way. I kept thinking, no matter what, Mocklin sure are friendly. They sure do admire humans. I could see them crew members with liberty heading off from the field with a whole gang of laughing, singing Mocklins following each one of them. After a while, Cap Haney came over on a freight truck. <laughs> it's a pleasure, I tell you, to see these Mocklins. I just came here from Welch's planet. The natives there are suspicious, unfriendly, and if you're not watching, they'll steal your gold teeth. Uh, but Mocklin... Captain Haney, don't give orders to unload your cargo. What do you mean? We are abandoning the post. What? We are leaving Mocklin completely. Sam Company pulling out when there's still a mill credit to be made? I don't believe it. I have authority to order the move, and Mr. Brooks has convinced me of the necessity for it. Now, Inspector, I know the company doesn't like to give in to competition. There isn't any competition. Well, I thought... Miss Caldwell's right. That other trading post is purely a Mocklin enterprise. They bought our goods from us and pretended to sell them at half price, and we got our prices, so they bought more goods from us and went on. Some Mocklin must have thought it'd be nice to be a smart businessman, so his kids would be smart businessmen. Too smart. We'll close up this post before the Mocklins think of something else. What? What do they think of? If they got loose from this planet, if they can pass as humans, their kids could take over human civilization. How would you like that? Mm. Oh, I see, yeah. You'd better make ready to blast off, Captain. Yeah, but I got the B section off on shore, Liberty. Men are scattered all over the place. With Mocklins? Sure, with Mocklins. You know how it is. Regular party. Fancy Mocklin clothes, food, liquor. Captain, you'd better sound the emergency recall. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean right away. <laughs> Counts for all but about five of them. They're coming across the field now. Keep that line straight for the hatch. We got to count off. Four, five. Yeah, they're all in line. I'll check against the roster. Wait a minute. There's another one coming. Look. By that tree. Well, there can't be. I've got 38 men lined up already. 38. That's a full count. That's a human. Wearing Mocklin clothes. Uh, it looks like Pete Werber from the engine crew. Hey. Hey, hey, wait. Wait for me. Wait! But it can't be. Werber's already checked in. There he is in line. Wait. Wait for me. Hey, whoa. Where'd you come from? I couldn't find my clothes. You see, I I, I was in these Mocklin clothes when the signal went off. I was trying to find my clothes. Werber, look over there in the line. Where? Hey, that's my clothes. That guy. He looks just like me. Now, what's the idea? Hey, you! Come over here! Yes, sir. What's the idea? All right. All right, you caught me. I- I'm a Mocklin. You stole my clothes. Why did you do it? Oh, we Mocklins like humans so much, I thought it would be nice to make a trip to Earth and see more humans. How come he looks like me? My parents planned it five years ago when you came here first. They made me look like this wonderful human and hid me till now. Uh, you'd give me back my clothes. But of course, of course. I wouldn't want to make any difficulties for humans. <laughs> Took it as a joke on him. He talked English as good as anybody. It was hard to tell which was the Mocklin and which the human guy. So we let him keep the human uniform, and he was very grateful. We took off after that, and the Mocklin stood around and laughed and waved and threw flowers as we closed the hatches. 
Pretty soon the Palmyra was pushing up through the atmosphere. Just before the auxiliary circuits went on during the jump to overdrive, we all stood around in the astrogator's dome with the screen turned up to high mag and watched as Marklin faded into a round cantaloupe behind us. It's a shame. Sure was a pretty planet. Real friendly. Too friendly. I still have the shivers, thinking we almost took a Mocklin off with us. Uh, the other crew had been on Mocklin long enough to have a double. Five years is a safety margin. Takes them that long to grow up. We were lucky, huh, Joe? Huh? What? I said we were lucky. Yeah. Yeah. We sure are. I guess I was the only one who felt a little different from the others about leaving Mocklin. I mean, Mocklin's a swell folks. It seemed a shame. There'd be an order out that no human ship is allowed to land on Mocklin. But I was thinking, I'll save my money, and those compliments, those three little kids that look just like Inspector Caldwell, in about five years they'll be grown. And I'll buy me a little private ship and shove off for Mocklin again. And I'll pick me one of those three red-headed gals and marry her Mocklin style and bring her out to a human colony planet. We'll have kids with brains, top-level brains. That's easy. If she wants it, that's the way the kids will be born. And I'll have to bring other Mocklins out, too, and start them passing for humans. My kids are going to need other Mocklins to marry, aren't they? It's not that I don't like humans. I do. If the fellow I look like, Joe Brinkley, hadn't gotten killed accidental on that hunting trip, I never would have thought of taking his place and being Joe Brinkley. That's what I was thinking when Brooke suddenly got an idea. Wait a minute. Joe, you and I were on Mocklin more than five years. Yeah? So? One thing. <clears throat> ah, and everything's all right. I mean, you can't blame me for wanting to live among humans, can you? Wouldn't you, if you was a Mocklin? You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features another fascinating For Your Information column written by Willie Lay. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you If You Was a Mocklin, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by Murray Leinster and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were Joseph Julian, Patricia Wheel, Carl Weber, Ralph Camargo, Helen Gerald, Stan Early, John Marley, and Dick Janiver. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production.